Hello and greetings my friends. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my kitchen. In today's video, I'm sharing with you three recipes, two easy dinner ideas and one dessert, of course, because I always have to include a dessert recipe on these what's for dinner videos. So let's get right into it. The very first dinner I'm gonna be sharing with you is a Chipotle chicken asado marinade. So if you have ever visited Chipotle and tried their chicken, it is super juicy and just like the marinade that is on it is just so delicious. And so I replicated it at home to make it cheaper It's because Chipotle is expensive for a family of five. So this recipe is super easy, really accessible and affordable ingredients. And you're gonna throw basically everything into a food processor or a blender to make the marinade. Why I chopped up the garlics like this, I don't know. I, I fully trust my food processor to do it for me. Not sure why I did that. Will be a lot easier if you guys do not even have to chop it. But just throw in some garlic and then some onions. And now this is the part where you're gonna have to decide how spicy do I want this to be? So the can of adobo peppers is pretty spicy. So if you want it somewhat mild if you're trying to serve like little kids i would probably just do one chipotle pepper now i use three in my recipe and that was pretty much the limit i would say for my kids i could probably have taken out one of them and it would have been perfect so definitely go by how spicy your family enjoys food if you like spice and definitely up the amount of adobo peppers but the sauce itself you'll definitely want to keep that the same i use about four tablespoons or so of the sauce in it and then you're going to use a juice of one whole lime and then throw in your seasonings i'm using chili powder cumin and oregano and then i'm using canola oil you can definitely use whatever type of oil you want next time i'm going to try it with extra virgin olive oil just to see the taste difference and i also kind of want to get into avocado oil so let me know if you guys are really familiar with avocado oil i use the spray at home like in my skillets but i don't really buy like the liquid type of oil so let me know how it cooks because i'm gonna i'm thinking about picking that up in my next costco haul and then you're just gonna blend this up in your blender or food processor now i'm gonna be using for my chicken i am using some boneless skinless chicken thighs because they use chicken thighs in their recipe so i wanted to make it as similar as possible now you can definitely use breast if that's what you prefer but using chicken thighs is going to be a lot juicier and just so much better i know there's extra work involved if you do have to buy it with the bone in and the skin on which is what i did because i buy my chicken from costco so i did have to put in a little bit of extra work but i will tell you it is worth it <laughs> You're going to want to combine the marinade and the chicken together and leave it in your fridge for at least 30 minutes, at least. Uh, longer would be better. I did mine for, I believe, four hours and oh my gosh, my, I want this again, like right now. It's so, so good. And then all you're going to do is throw this into a searing hot, like, and I mean like scorching hot skillet. Mine was still not hot enough. I should have made it a lot hotter because you're going to want one of the sides to caramelize, actually all the sides, but when you first lay it down, you're going to want it to caramelize. You're going to have like a nice, like crispy crust on the outside. Oh my God. Have I not sold you on this yet, you guys? I'm telling you, it is so, so good. And this chicken cooks up in like 15 to 20 minutes. It is phenomenal. So once it is cooked on one side for about six minutes, you're gonna wanna flip them. Remember, you still want your skillet really, really hot. Flip them and then cook them for about eight more minutes or so. And once they are fully cooked through, let them rest on your like cutting board or a plate for at least like five minutes or so, just so that the juices will stay inside the chicken and not get all over the place. So you can use this chicken in burritos, tacos, quesadillas, on salads, or what I did was I made it as a burrito bowl um, with like a little bit of salad, a little bit of rice, and then you can of course add some beans and your favorite toppings. Speaking of beans, I'm gonna share with you guys a really easy way to make refried beans in the Instant Pot. Now you don't even have to prep your beans beforehand, just give them a really good rinse and pick through, making sure like there's no like rocks or broken beans in there. And you're gonna put it all in your Instant Pot with some chicken broth. And then you're gonna set this on high pressure and allow it to cook for 45 minutes. And then once your 45 minutes is up, you're gonna wanna drain the beans, but make sure when you go to drain them, you have like a bowl or a measuring bowl or a cup or something underneath so that it catches all the liquid because that liquid I'm gonna use 
back into the beans when I go to mix it up. Now I know a lot of people don't enjoy using that liquid. You could just come back with like chicken broth or water or whatever you wanna do, but I find like if it's there, I might as well use it. So I am gonna be using that. So I'm gonna leave my beans in the colander for one second while I chop up an onion because I love onions in refried beans. I think it's so good. So I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna put some olive oil down inside the Instant Pot with the saute function on and I'm gonna saute the onions for just a little while along with the beans. I'm gonna like essentially fry them up in the Instant Pot for maybe like four minutes or so and then I'm gonna come in and mash them. Now I'm letting my son help me because he always is super interested in what I'm cooking which is amazing. I love that. So I'm gonna let him mash it for a little bit while I start to add in the liquid. So I'm gonna do that a little bit at a time while he continues to mash it. But then I'm gonna come in at the very end with my immersion blender because that is what is gonna make this extremely creamy. I want this really creamy with no whole beans left in there. Now you can definitely make it to where it's like you want a little bit of like whole beans because I occasionally I like that, but I know that my son, the one who's actually helping me right here, prefers creamy all the way. So um, that's how we're making it. He's helping me. We'll make it the way he wants it made. Also, the really cool thing about this too is that this freezes very well. So whatever we didn't eat, I saved it in a little glass container and I placed it in my freezer. And whenever I was ready to pull it out, it was ready to go. I just kind of warmed it up in a skillet with some more oil. So this is a great freezer meal option. For this next meal, I am making a different version of a recipe that I already have. I have a really delicious fish taco recipe on my website that you can use for both fish tacos or shrimp tacos. So tonight I am making some shrimp tacos and I am making the creamy broccoli slaw that goes along with it. Super easy to make and I'm making this before I start making my shrimp tacos because I want to kind of let this sit in my fridge for a little bit with all of the ingredients being able to marry together. So I like to make my shrimp in the oven the same way with my fish. I don't know why, it just turns out less rubbery for me when I roast it high. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing the exact same recipe, the exact same seasonings. So right here I'm drying my shrimp and you wanna do that regardless of if you make this in a shrimp taco way or fish tacos because that kind of removes just whatever moisture or water is on there because we want to have a crispy exterior. So that's why it's very important to dry off your shrimp or your fish. And then I'm just gonna rub it with some olive oil and sprinkle all of the seasonings. There's quite a bit that's going on here, but it is so good. And I'm gonna roast this in my 400 degree oven for about 10 to 12 minutes. While the shrimp is cooking in the oven, I'm going to whip up a little avocado cream sauce. So I only had one good avocado left and I was like, this is not gonna make it for all five of us on top of our tacos. So I decided to incorporate it in what I had left of my sour cream, which was not much. It was probably like maybe three quarters of a cup or so. So I'm just gonna take that avocado, kind of mash it into the sour cream, add some lime juice and call it a day. And it was delicious, very simple, and a way to use up ingredients that I really didn't have much to do with. So to assemble, I like to have some corn tortillas that I warmed up on the stovetop. I'm gonna place the broccoli slaw down first and then followed with the shrimp. So I'm leaving the shrimp whole for my tacos as, along with my husband's tacos. But for the kids, what I like to do to make it go further is I like to chop up the shrimp just so that it's in more bite-sized pieces. It's easier for them to eat, plus I can put a lot more into their taco versus like leaving it whole. So I totally recommend doing that if you have kids. It's just way easier that way. And on top of the shrimp, I'm gonna add that avocado cream sauce along with some Cholula. That is my absolute favorite hot sauce. Let me know what you keep in your fridge. We are going to be making a delicious old-fashioned jello lemon cake. I have so many lemons outside on our tree right now that are producing and I am ready for springtime. I'm ready for the heat to come back. It's cold here even though I'm in California. It still gets cold here and I'm ready for 
nice bright stuff. So what better way to satiate that than making a lemon cake? And this is the easiest cake ever, guys. So I'm using a box cake. I'm using the lemon flavor. You're going to need some lemon jello, a box of it. Uh, some lemons, of course, powdered sugar, eggs, water, some oil, and then this is optional, but if you have it, absolutely use it. I'm going to be adding in some lemon extract. I use this lemon extract in my copycat Starbucks iced lemon loaf too. This just helps bring that lemon flavor up another notch. So if you have it, use it. If not, do not worry about it. So let's bring you closer and make this cake. The best thing about this cake is that it comes together super, super fast. Like I'm talking like minutes to make. So if you're needing something quick to put um, on the dinner table for an after dinner dessert, this is gonna be it. So we're taking a package of cake mix, lemon cake mix, any one that you can find in the store is good. My package of lemon jello. And this is a three ounce box of lemon jello going in. I'm going to be pouring in equal amounts of water and oil. You could use vegetable oil, but I'm going to use canola oil. So I have water and oil. I'm going to give this a quick little mix real fast. By the way, my oven is already preheated to 350 degrees. And I just need to spray my baking dish with some nonstick cooking spray before I pour this in. Okay, and now I'm gonna add in my four eggs. My mom loves when I make this recipe. Well, she loves when I make like literally anything, but she loves lemon desserts, so she's gonna be happy to get some slices today. Okay, I'm gonna whisk this all up real quick. And then again, if you have it, amazing, use it. If not, do not worry about it. But I'm adding in half a teaspoon of lemon extract. It doesn't sound like much, but trust me, this just makes it even more lemony and bright. All right, and now I'm gonna pour this into my baking dish real quick. I need to spray it though. Guys, I scored this Sir La Table uh, casserole dish on, I believe Facebook Marketplace or something for like $10, a set of two. And normally, how much are these? Are they usually like 50 bucks or something? So what a score. All right, so I sprayed my baking dish. I'm using a 13 by nine here. I'm gonna pour this guy in. Make sure it's even and into the 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. Okay, one of the things I forgot to mention in the ingredients is I'm using two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna actually melt this down in this measuring dish and make the frosting in here, or the glaze rather. It's more of a glaze that's gonna go right over the top. So let me melt this really quick. All right, I melted my two tablespoons of butter. Now I'm going to add in two cups of powdered sugar. Uh, you know what, I don't need a measuring cup. This is a measuring cup. Perfect. And then I am going to zest two lemons. Now, depending on how tangy you want it, maybe you'll just do one lemon, but I'm going to do two. That is quite a bit, but I want all the lemon here. One thing you can do too, which I do a couple, I've done it a few times, is uh, zesting some lemon into the cake batter. So if you can remember to do that, why definitely do that. And my lemons are gonna have some seeds in there, so. All right, so I'm gonna juice two lemons in here. And it's probably gonna be about like a third of a cup, I would say. Okay, I'm gonna whisk this up really quick to see how we're looking. Yep, I'm gonna need some more, because we want this kind of runny, and this is kind of thick already, so I don't want it thick, I want it more runny. Of course, if you make it too runny, you can always go back in with more powdered sugar. I remember lemons saved my life pretty much during this last pregnancy. 
oh it was a doozy but lemons i bought like all things lemon like lemon candles uh, i would smell or sniff lemons oh my gosh all right that is way better so i only have a few minutes left on my cake and what i'm gonna do when i pull the cake out is i'm gonna poke some holes with some toothpicks just to make a little bit of tiny holes over the top and then the glaze is going to be poured right over the holes so 30 minutes is up here is my cake and you might need to check it like between 30 to 35 minutes just depending on how your oven bakes but 30 minutes for me is perfect and i am going to take some toothpicks now you can do this several different ways you can do like either a chopstick or like a fork but I don't want super big holes in this. I, so I'm gonna be using a toothpick and I'm gonna go around the entire cake just poking little holes. And I'm not going all the way to the bottom. I'm going like into the middle of the cake. And I'm making my holes like an inch or so apart, making sure I do get the sides though too. All right, so now, remember I just pulled this out so it's still really, really hot. And give this glaze one more stir. And I'm going to just start kind of helping the glaze get into those holes by pushing the glaze down with a little spatula here. remember this is not thick at all this is just a regular glaze going right on top it'll still harden a little bit on the top Ugh, but I love the sides of the cake like the edges when the, the glaze just goes like down around on the inside like that oh so good and there you have it you guys let this rest for at least like 20 minutes before you cut into it it's so good warm but that is it the easiest cake ever and that is it my friends for this video i hope you guys liked it i hope that these are some good recipes that you guys can incorporate in your own homes let me know if there are any that you would like to try and also if you are new here i have a ton of other videos i have a recipe blog so definitely check that out in the link below i'll link everything and i hope to see you in the next video bye guys